In 2017, Inigo Philbrick was on his way into Berlin on a private jet to meet a client. He was there to meet Daniel Tumple to discuss selling a $2.3 million work of art called The Mirror Room by renowned Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama. When he landed, Inigo met up with Tumple in a limousine and partied all over the city. When they finally did talk business, Inigo agreed to take the mirror room back to Miami and hang it in his gallery. Then he'd sell it and send the money back to Tumple. A simple enough process. However, he strung along Tumple for 10 months. In reality, he'd already sold the painting and pocketed the cash. Tumple grew hey. suspicious. Tumple and his wife wanted to know the status of their other piece of art he had with them called Untitled 2010, which was worth just over $4.8 million at the time. The Tumples wanted to know if it was safe in Inigo's hands. He sent them a picture straight out of a hostage situation showing him, the painting, and a copy of the morning newspaper. The only problem? Inigo photoshopped the painting in the picture. In reality, Phil Brick used Untitled 2010 along with four other paintings as collateral to apply for a $15 million loan. Inigo rose to fame by selling high-priced art for his clients. Art dealers are like real estate agents for expensive art. The owner gets most of the money and the dealer takes a cut. At the time, Inigo had a piece of art for sale called Untitled. That came with a $5.5 million price tag. This isn't the same artwork that had been owned by the Tumples. To pad his pockets, Inigo sold multiple percentages of the art to several different people. It would be like selling a home, but you sell the kitchen to buyer one, the bedroom to buyer two, the bathroom to buyer three, and the rec room to buyer four. Sometimes he'd sell more than 100% ownership of the painting. In the end, Inigo received around $10 million in total for the untitled piece. The owner of Untitled believed himself to be the sole owner of the painting. So you can understand why he was confused when other people came forward looking for their cut of the auction money. While the Untitled scam wasn't Philbrick's first scam, it marked the beginning of the end. His investors knew they'd been duped, so they filed lawsuit after lawsuit looking for the money they believed was rightfully theirs. As more and more of Inigo's scams came to light, the pressure finally popped. Inigo broke down and confessed to two clients about what he'd done. He even knew he was going to get caught. In the end, he made off with $86 million worth of loans and investor cash. Money he spent living a lavish life of parties, travel, and deception. Inigo wasn't born a scammer. He was a graduate of the same school his father attended, Goldsmith University of London, a well-respected school that focused on art education. After graduation, Inigo became pretty well respected. He landed an internship with the owner of the esteemed White Cube Art Gallery and worked under the mentorship of Jay Joplin. Success came quickly for a young Inigo. By 2013, he opened his own contemporary art gallery and became a regular face at large art auctions across the US and UK. Many considered him a bona fide art expert, and his gallery grossed over $130 million in 2017. That same year, he opened another branch of his gallery in Miami, Florida. However, Inigo's rise to fame didn't come without some strange habits. Every morning in the shower, he'd shout his own name over and over again to pump himself up for the day. He even had a sweatshirt with his name printed across it three times. From an early state, it was clear that Inigo saw himself in a different kind of light. He had big dreams and bigger aspirations. However, as is often true of the overambitious, those aspirations led to his inevitable downfall. While he started legit, it wasn't long before Inigo got a taste for the high-flying world of multi-million dollar art dealing. His rising success put him in social circles with other wealthy and high-status individuals, including his reality TV girlfriend, Victoria Baker Harbour. When the two met through mutual friends in 2016, Inigo was actually dating someone else, a fellow art dealer, Francisca Mancini, 
Mancini, who had just given birth to Inigo's daughter. However, the connection between him and Victoria was undeniable. In fact, Victoria even nicknamed him Fruit after the forbidden nature of their love. His new love was quite wealthy herself. She loved fashion and yachts, and her own career was nothing short of flashy. Victoria starred on a reality TV show called Made in Chelsea that follows the lives of rich young people in the West London area. She and Inigo split most of their time between London and New York, flying in private planes, dining at fancy restaurants, and partying until the sun came up. According to New York Magazine, Inigo even kept a healthy stash of MDMA on hand, a psychedelic substance. Though successful, Inigo wasn't making enough to maintain his lavish lifestyle. Driven by greed and the need to keep up appearances, Inigo turned to scamming. He would resell the same piece of art over and over to multiple people, promising them that they would make a profit once he sold it at auction. Sometimes he would split the worth of an artwork into percentages and sell more than 100% worth of ownership to its buyers. Some clients would already own expensive art and come to Inigo for his help in listing and selling it. Instead, Inigo would apply for multi-million dollar loans with their art as the collateral. Now that he was swimming in cash, Inigo could afford lavish luxuries like $50,000 watches, $5,000 suits, and custom-made shoes. He proposed to Victoria in a private villa on Ibiza, a luxury Spanish island in the Mediterranean. Inigo even kept a house account open at Cipriani, a pricey and well-known Italian restaurant in London. Kenny Schachter is an American artist, writer, and all around around academic. However, he wasn't wise enough to notice a scam when he saw one. He and Inigo were good friends, close friends even. Still, our art dealing con man scammed Kenny out of one and a half million dollars. However, Kenny was quite the character himself, as learned in his tell-all write-up about their relationship in New York Magazine. The two met in 2012, when Inigo was an up-and-coming 25-year-old Justin Timberlake look-alike kid from London. He was sharp, fun, and funny, drawing Kenny in like a fish on a line. They drank expensive wine, ate expensive sushi, and traveled the world together on private jets. However, the most important characteristic they shared was their mutual love of all things art. Their relationship wasn't for nothing either. Like most scammers, Inigo helped Kenny make a little bit of money before ripping him off. He knew he had to gain his victim's trust before he gouged them for all their worth. He helped Kenny flip an $800,000 Christopher Wool for a few hundred grand. All the while, Kenny had no idea what Inigo was doing outside of their relationship. He even wrote a positive review about Inigo for Artnet News. Six months later, Kenny finally opened his eyes. All the red flags lined up. He recalled rampant use of illegal narcotics and times when Inigo took Kenny's kids out to Ibiza for three-day benders. Kenny remembered how Inigo casually carried his illegal pills through airports without a care in the world. The risk seemed impressive at the time, but when you're scamming the art world for $86 million, eh, petty possession doesn't seem all that scary. While in Ibiza, Inigo played $100,000 hands of drunken backgammon, keeping Kenny out until almost 9 in the morning. In fact, Kenny would have to sneak in through his bedroom window since his wife locked him out of the house. Maybe if Kenny didn't let the facade Inigo called his life cloud his judgment, he'd have realized he'd been taken for thousands, if not millions of dollars. Remember that $15 million loan Philbrook took out, he defaulted on $14 million worth of that loan in 2019, which officially put a massive target on Inigo's back. With $14 million in loans hanging over his head and a mountain of lawsuits bearing his name, Inigo and a pregnant Victoria fled to the Pacific island of Vanuatu, also known as a sunny place for shady people. It's a tax haven that criminals regularly use to hide illicit funds from the government and escape authorities. They rented out a run-down boathouse, but did little to hide their identities. Remember, Victoria was a well-known reality TV star, and Inigo was the high-flying art dealer on the run from the FBI. He even booked tennis lessons under his own name, got coffee from the same shop every morning, and started rescuing stray dogs. Still, one of their neighbors in Vanuatu described him as considerate and kind. Inigo and Victoria flew under the radar for six months before the feds finally caught up with them. In June of 2020, while walking through the street markets on the island, local police pulled up beside them and threw Inigo in the back of a cop car. Victoria begged officers to let her go with her Inigo, so they tossed her in a separate car. Police drove the pair to the airport, where a Gulfstream jet waited to take them back to the U.S., perhaps the last private jet he'd ever fly on. Inigo's trial began as soon as they landed back in the States. The prosecution showed that his schemes also included inflating the value of artwork with falsified documents, and one contract even listed a stolen identity as the seller. These schemes, paired with his technique of overselling ownership percentages, were all meant to fund his lavish lifestyle 
lifestyle. When the judge asked him why he committed these crimes, Inigo told the truth for the first time in a long time. It was for the money, Your Honor. Inigo left the trail of betrayed friends, business partners, and investors in his wake. Many of them trusted Inigo, and he stabbed them in the back for personal gain. His friends, turned victims, don't feel sorry for him at all. In fact, they think he deserves what he gets. While her husband awaited sentencing, Victoria returned to filming her reality TV show. This time, she had a newborn daughter named Gaia Grace to show off. On the first episode of The Most Current Season, she said she couldn't wait to get through this and have her little family back together. She also wrote a statement to present to the court and said that the trauma and shock felt like death. She wrote that she was desperately lonely and questioned if she would be able to carry on. She tells the court that she can't function with an ego and begged them to treat him with leniency. Inigo ultimately pleaded guilty to one count of wire fraud and was ordered to serve seven years in prison and forfeit over $86 million worth of stolen funds. Meanwhile, everything was laughs and jokes on Made in Chelsea as Victoria joked about visiting Inigo in jail. She said he looked good in khaki and that orange wasn't really his color. Meanwhile, during the pandemic, Inigo contracted COVID twice while in prison and complained that the inmates were only fed peanut butter sandwiches and lunch meat for weeks due to the lockdowns. Sharon Fletcher, the executive director of the International Foundation for Art Research, learned of Inigo's case and said that fortunately, scams like this don't happen that often. When they do, they expose the soft underbelly of an art world where large sums of money are transferred with little transparency. Inigo's story shows what happens when trust is misplaced and people of seemingly good backgrounds turn out to be dishonest. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comment section what percent of modern art isn't art at all to you.